Welcome to Where is Bishop? Thank you for watching. Today we're going to be talking about the scientific revolution and to me this is one of the most important time periods in history. First, it's going to be the final straw for the kings and queens of England, France, Spain, and other European countries. As people begin learning about the world around them and how it actually works, not just with religion or what the king says, their power is going to be starting to be questioned. Secondly, and arguably the most important, people are going to learn about the so-called mysteries of the world and begin to realize that they are not the center of the solar system or it's important to take a bath every day because of bacteria on our skin. This is vital to increase our life expectancy and why we're so high today with an average of 77 for men and 82 for women and just to be cleaner and smell better. Anywho, back to the video. While you watch the video, please jot a couple notes about things that you learned and you did not realize about the scientific revolution. Please bring these to class and we'll discuss and I will check for homework. To begin, let's talk about exactly what the scientific revolution is. Reminder, revolution is change, and in this case, it's going to change the way we see science and how we understand our world around us. From old science to new science, and thank gosh this happens. So back in the day, scholars generally relied on ancient authorities, such as the Bible or other writings, church teachings, common sense, and reasoning to explain the physical world. In time, during the scientific revolution, this changed. Scholars began to use observation, experimentation, and scientific reasoning to gather knowledge and draw conclusions about the physical world. For example, it'd stand up, don't move, and close your eyes. What do you feel? We don't feel the earth rotating, but it does. Old science would say we're not moving because we can't feel it. New science says through experimentation and understanding of the world around us, it is moving. This is just one example of our change. The scientists of the scientific revolution had many goals. Their main goal was to solve mysteries, mysteries that could not be explained. These included why do stones fall, why stars seem to move, and what is the function of the heart? Some examples. In time, during the scientific revolution, experiments and mathematics were used to solve or theorize these mysteries. So if we look at this list, we know that stones fall because of gravity, stars move because of gravitational pull and rotating and other things happening in our solar system. And what is the function of the heart? It is to pump blood through our system and keep us alive not just to worship God as the old way of science would want us to think. During the scientific revolution, scientists focused on a principle called the principle of doubt or questioning. From 1500 to 1600, nothing was to be believed unless it could be proved by an experiment or mathematics. So scientists would not accept a conclusion unless that was the case. So I have a question for you to jot down in your notes. You don't have to write the question, but you can write your response. The question is, what is something, an idea, that cannot be proved with an experiment? What is something in our world that we understand, but we could not prove with experiment even today? There are still some mysteries left. Please take a moment, pause the video, and jot these down, and we will see our list tomorrow and compare. So in order for these scientists to have these experiments and to rule out the principle of doubt when trying to solve problems, they needed new instruments. But a lot of these were not invented yet. So what do they do? They invent them themselves. Here are some examples. Many of these we use on a regular basis and we don't even realize it. And some we don't even realize are named after people that invented them. If you can see here, the thermometer, we say it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Fahrenheit is actually the gentleman who made the thermometer. We wouldn't be able to tell our weather. 
we wouldn't be able to see the stars, and we wouldn't be able to see the bacteria on our hands without these inventions. Thank you inventors for questioning the world around us. Our world would be totally different by now. Not only do we have scientists that you saw before and we're going to be learning about Copernicus and Galileo and Kepler more in class, we had other inventors and people we may recognize. We have Francis Bacon. He's theorized in order to solve problems, scientists need to use experiments and draw conclusions. We also have Rene, who is one of the skeptics from our French monarch's uh, study, and he is going to combine algebra and geometry, creating analytical geometry as a tool for conducting scientific research, and he's going to write a book on this. Many of you will be taking this class in college, because I know a lot of you are into math and science. Thank you, Rene. So in class tomorrow, we're going to be discussing in more detail about how before the scientific revolution our solar system was thought about and how it is today thank gosh for the inventions of the telescope and other technology we're able to use so to wrap up the video objective i did not give you an objective at the beginning of this video your task now is to write our objective for this video be specific so imagine you're going to create a slide for this video stating our objective, what would it say? For help, you can use our other video notes and you can also go to the website below. I try to make a bit.ly so it would be easier to see and this will give you some verbs and action words that can help you create your objective. If you have any questions, please email me or we can discuss more in class. And of course, for our Where is Bishop? I am sitting in Meriden, Connecticut on planet Earth. How far is a planet from the sun in miles? Please email me at whereisbishop at gmail.com. Thank you. See you tomorrow.